Warning, this episode contains adult language, mature situations, generic shonen main characters, mysterious prank-calling creatures, teleporting phone cards, psychic abilities, post-apocalyptic futures, taboo creatures, time manipulation, and tropes galore. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Listener discretion is advised. Episode 425, Siren. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spark and Manga Review. I'm your host, Zan, saying konnichiwa, aloha, bonjour, and what's up? Hope all of you are doing well out there in internet land and hope you're doing well. I've been doing pretty good and I am excited because this week I am going to be running a panel at Anime Lockdown. Yes, that's right, folks. Anime Lockdown, the online convention that was started last year by former podcaster Fightbait John Paul. What panel am I running? Well, I'm going to be running that one, that only from under the bed horror and anime manga at 11 o'clock in the evening. So if you want to get your horror recommendations on, definitely check that out. But some of you are wondering, what the hell is this guy talking about? What have I walked into? Well, let me start over if you're joining us for the first time. Welcome. So Sparkin, or some podcast making reviews about connectively enhanced narratives, is a podcast where we talk about geeky, fun things. Since the manga review, obviously we talk about manga. And I tell you the pros and cons about it, how the art style is, the overarching plot, the characters, and most importantly, if it's worth investing your time in or not. You don't have to agree with anything that I or my co say, but we try to be educational, enlightening, exciting, and most importantly, entertaining. You can check out any of our earlier episodes at www.spirekin.com. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, and various other social media sites. Just type in Spirekin. In the search bar, and I guarantee you find us one way or the other. Also, you can check out our Let's Plays at twitch.tv forward slash Spirekin. Lots of social media for you to check out and lots of content for you to consume. And if you like the content that we provide, support us on our Patreon and help us create more fun content for you to enjoy. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Spirekin. And I believe that's everything. Oh, and if you have any questions or comments or concerns, you can email me personally at Zan, that's X-A-N, at Spirekin.com. That's S-P-I-R-A-K-E-N. And now that all that chilling's out of the way, let's actually get to this because I am excited to talk about this old school manga that was released by Viz. Yes. So, if you remember in the last episode, I spun that one, that only, the Wheel of Manga, and it dictated me there viewing a manga that was written by Toshiaki Iwashiro, and it was published by Shuisha, but brought over here by Viz Media. And this is, yes, that's right, a weekly Shonen Jump title. That means it's a Shonen series, specifically a action-adventure sci-fi Shonen series. A lot of tropes, trust me. Uh, originally ran in, in Shonen Jump from December 2007 to November 2010. There are 16 volumes, and... It is kind of interesting because this is technically an izakai, but it's not. And what is the manga that I am talking about? It is known simply as Siren, spelled P-S-Y-R-E-N. Yes, Psy for psychic. And how to describe Siren? Well, we have our typical shonen main character, Agiha Yoshina, a guy who will solve any problem for 10 thousand yen that's right he'll beat up people for a hundred bucks he'll save cats he'll do homework he'll do anything to do that because that's how he rolls and he's currently living alone with his sister at their home because their dad kind of disappeared and mom is dead so it's a whole thing but the sister's in charge and he just does his thing and one day he hears a phone start ringing randomly on the street it's a pay phone so he walks up to it picks it up and he hears his echo. Thinks it's nothing, but as he hangs up the phone, a mysterious calling card pops out of the phone with the word siren on it. And he's kind of confused by this, so he's like, oh, whatever, I guess that's that. But this mysterious red card is kind of driving him crazy, so he decides to go to the school's occult club and talk about it, and it turns out that there's this whole conspiracy about siren. Everyone is looking about it. There are people who've disappeared. There's rumors that it's some weird government experiment. Who knows which of these rumors is true? The only thing that they do know is that there is a group that is offering a reward of 500 million yen to anybody who talks about this. And he's kind of intrigued by that because 500 million yen is a lot more than 10,000 yen. And as long as the card is unused, that should be fine. Also, there's a mysterious group that is kind of hunting him down. A one with the... A old man with an eye patch and a bunch of goons. He doesn't know what's going on, but he is smart enough to outsmart them and cool enough to fight them because he's a typical shonen character with shonen punchy punchy powers. Also, 
there is a girl in school that he was formerly friends with, and now she's known as the Ice Queen. We're talking about Sakurako Amamiya, the girl who all the girls pick on because she's weird, and she doesn't care about being popular anymore because it doesn't matter because Siren is coming. That is the one thing that he does know about Siren. And after an incident occurs where some of the mean girls try to burn her wallet and he saves the day, he notices in her wallet is a Siren card. He's confused, doesn't know what's going on. He's like, what's the card about? It's like, don't worry about it. You didn't see anything. Leave me alone. And the last thing he heard, and he heard it in his head, is Amamiya saying, save me. And so he's confused by that worry, but doesn't, he's like, okay, okay, she's in trouble. Maybe I could talk to her tomorrow and figure out what's going on. However, the next day, she isn't at school. And the next day, she isn't at school. This goes on for a week until she's declared missing. And Agahi has no idea what to do. He's confused. People have been trying to get him. And he wants to save Amamiya. So what Agaha does, his name's Agaha, not Agahi. But Agaha puts the card in the phone. He's like, this is worth 500 million yen on you. But I gotta save her. Puts it in. And a random voice answers the phone. It starts asking him questions, 61 questions that seem arbitrary to very crazy. At first, it's like, are you satisfied with your life? Would you go to another world? Are you happy with this? Do you like cloudy days? Do you like rainy days? And when he tries to hang up, the voice actually yells at him. It's like, why did you hang up? I know you're leaving. You're just a lazy bum. Who knows what's going on with you? And so eventually, the questioner asks him if he wants to go to Siren. He vaguely answers, but hangs up, thinks it's a prank, whatever. And above the telephone, we see a mysterious figure who looks like a bird person. Very weird. But, long story short, after being chased again by the mysterious people trying to be police officers, he hears a phone ringing. It's his cell phone. In a panic, he picks it up, and he's sucked to a random post-apocalyptic world. And he sees Amamiya hurt really bad. So he grabs her, and he tries taking her to a location. And it turns out, this is the world of Siren. It's a strange, mysterious world, which is... Super post apocalyptic It's desert, it's burnt out buildings. And all you need are evil psycho mutants. Wait, no, there are psycho mutants trying to kill people. Yes, it's full post apocalyptic. But Amamiya is hurt really bad. Agaha grabs her, brings her to this one building where there's a bunch of other people because he's drawn to it. And she's unconscious. He's going to wait for her. But these other people are wondering what's going on. And they hear a phone ringing. They see that there is a payphone. So Agaha picks it up. And suddenly everyone gets a vision in their head of another phone. And they say, to get out of here, go to the other gate. And so everyone starts hearing a siren. And they think, hey, maybe the siren, that's where the gate is. We're going to follow the siren. And he's like, no, I'm going to wait for her. And turns out that was a smart thing to do because the siren is actually drawing a bunch of evil monsters to the locate to a different location. The phone actually has a map which you can draw, which leads from point A to point B. The object of the game is to go from one point, which is the entry gate, to the exit gate, which is another cell phone. And when you find it, you get to go home, and a lot of violence occurs. Uh, at the end of it, the first volume, he ends up getting back home with Amamiya. And we discover two things. One, on each card, if you put it to your head, like most Isekais, it's a character sheet. But this one has a number on it that's slowly going down. When it reaches zero, you are free. You don't have to go back to Siren. But as long as that number is there, you have to keep getting sent to Siren, to which is actually the future. There's a whole mystery going on. And also, because it is the future, and they breathed in the air of this irradiation everyone who survives there were three the first time they are given psychic abilities now what are the psychic abilities well each one's slightly different we're not going to get into that but overall it's a psychic show and so imagine your typical shonen series with a little bit of izakai and a little bit of gants and psychics and that's siren it's a just very generic series that is drawn pretty well honestly but the tropes have been done so much better it reminds me of a more positive version of i'm standing on a million lives which came out way later this probably inspired that also like i said there's that whole gantz element where as they complete missions they get rewards and their reward is they're 
going to pay off their debt to the evil being known as Nemesis Q that is following them, the weird bird creature I talked about earlier. And in order for them to complete this, they have to uh, do all these missions. Also, there's some other issues like the fact that the Siren Drifters, as they're called, are unable to tell anyone about Siren or else they'll die. Uh, They can't lose their card. They can't go near the towers. There's a whole bunch of rules that they have to follow, which I just like that they've established the rules. Also, I do enjoy the fact that the abilities are very different. Um, The psychic abilities go to enhancing physical strength, using psychic abilities to cause concussive blasts, or being able to affect someone's mental state. And all these abilities are varied, and it's very different than the typical, oh, they have telekinesis. Oh, they have telepathy. Oh, they have... Um, pyrokinesis. It's a interesting mix on it. But overall, to brass taxes, this is an Izekai series. Let's be honest. It's an earlier Izekai series, but it's still an Izekai series, and I'm kind of Izekai'd out. I would love to be like, this is amazing and great, but no, it's typical. Typical shonen main character gets sent to another world, gains mystical ability, saves the world, meets a girl who he's in love with who has a uh, multiple personality, and then hijinks ensue. That's what this is. I could see why it never got an anime. I could see that it was just not up to snuff for Shonen Jump. There are so many better Shonen Jump series. This one was just kind of lazily done. And we've gone way past that. For that reason, I'm going to have to give Siren a gift from your crazy Aunt Muriel. If you've never read an Izekai before, it's worth checking out. But in the long run, it's okay, but forget them. That's my review of it. Now, if you've read Siren, let me know what you think. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you think it's not overrated? Or do you think it's super overrated? Or have you never even heard about it before and you don't want to check it out? Let me know in the comments. Or you can email me personally. Like I said, it's zanspirekin.com or tweet me at Spirekin. So, man, now that the manga review is done, let's actually get to the manga releases for the week. And these are the manga that came out July 6, 2021. And we have 33 new titles, and I'm excited for a couple of these. Well, first off, we have Accomplishments of the Duke's Daughter, the Light Novel, Volume 1. Opossum, Volume 7. Card Captor Sakura, Collector's Edition, Volume 9. D. Gray Man, Volume 27. Die Dark, Volume 2. Devilish Darling's Portal Fantasy, the manga. Dr. Stone, Volume 17. Fire Force, 23. The Great Pretender, Volume 1, Idle Dreams, Volume 7, I'm in Love with the Villainous, The Light Novel, Volume 3, Kageki Shoujo, Volume 1, Love Me, Love Me Not, Volume 9, Mashi, Magic and Muscle, Volume 1, Moriarty the Patriot, Volume 4, Muscles Are Better Than Magic, Volume 2, Mushoku Tensei, Jobless Reincarnation, The Manga, Volume 13, My Hero Academia, Vigilantes, Volume 10, my Little Pony is the manga, A Day in the Life of Equestria, the Omnibus, Orisama Teacher, Volume 29, Orient 3, Platinum End, Volume 13, Pretty Boy Detective Club, Volume 1, Queen's Quality, Volume 12, Sachi's Monstrous Appetite, Volume 3, Shaman King Omnibus, Volume 3, which is, includes Volume 7 through 9, Shikimori is Not Just a Cutie, Volume 5, Snow White with the Red Hair, Volume 15, Super Heroes, with the X between H and E, Volume 3. Sweat and Soap, Volume 7. The final volume of Promise Neverland. Yes, Promise Neverland, Volume 20. The Saints Magical Powers Omnipotent, Volume 3. And then Undead Unluck, Volume 2, which actually I thought came out two weeks ago. But I guess that some stores have broken street date. Oh, well. I guess that happened. And those are the titles that were released this week. And I've got to say, for me, what I'm excited for was Promise Neverland, Sweat and Soap, Sachi's Monstrous Appetite, Mashley, Magic and Muscles, Moriarty the Patriot, My Hero Academia Vigilantes, Great Pretender, Dr. Stone, and Die Dark. Those are what I'm interested in. So what are you interested in? Let me know in the show notes. And we're almost at the end, but I would like to say thank you guys for checking out this podcast and continuing to listen to this thing I started in 2008. I've been going as long as I can. I'm going to keep doing this because I love talking about manga. And I hope I've been able to tell you about some fun manga along the way. And don't worry, we've got tons of more manga to talk about. So I have lots of time to talk about such things. But I hope you guys have been enjoying it. Remember to like and subscribe. And with that in mind, 
let's get to the part that we've all been waiting for. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about that one, that only, the Wheel of Manga! Yes, friends, the Wheel of Manga, except no substitute. You know, what is the Wheel of Manga? The Wheel of Manga is a Wheel of Fortune with 10 slots on it. And what I've done is I've assigned a manga title to each of the 10 slots. So we're going to use our spin, that one, that only, the Wheel of Manga. And whatever number it lands on, the manga that's in that spot is the one I'm going to review in the next episode of the Spark and Manga Review, episode 426. Can you believe we've hit 426? It's crazy that we've been doing it that long. And we're going to keep going until we hit at least 1,000. That's my goal, 1,000. But... I digress, so let's spin and see what we're going to review in the next episode, shall we? That was kind of an epic spin. Number eight. Whoa, so in the next episode I'm reading a really retro manga, a classic manga collection even. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Super Sentai, Himitsu Sentai Goringer. The classic manga collection. Yes, supposedly the originator to Sentai series like Power Rangers. I don't know what it's about, but this is kind of cool. Can't wait to see what it is. If you've read this or are excited, let me know in the show notes down below. Remember to like and subscribe. Also, just letting you know, I'm going to be doing some of these reviews live and actually over Twitch and on video. But the only way to see that is if you join our Patreon and join our our Aloha tier and higher, yes. We have four tiers in our Patreon. We have the Konnichiwa tier, the Aloha tier, the Bonjourno tier, and the What's Up tier. Each tier has different things. If you join just the basic, which is the What's Up tier, you're going to be getting access to the Lost Spirekin podcast episode. Yes, these are the ones that never released for certain reasons. Either the po- audio quality was terrible, there were issues in the background, or they were incomplete. You'll have access to that and a few other really cool things. If you join the Aloha tier, you're going to be getting access to not just the Lost Archive, but you're going to be getting access to some live videos as well. The Bongiorno tier is also going to be giving you access to our Discord, where you can vote on what goes on the Wheel of Manga in the What's up tier, you're getting limited edition video reviews where you actually see me talk about the video with the manga in hand. It's kind of cool and you're going to get some behind the scenes stuff as well. Definitely join and check it out. So I think that's it for this episode. Uh, As usual, thank you guys for checking out this podcast. I can't wait to see you guys next week. Also remember, tomorrow is Thursday, so that is the Manga News Podcast where we talk about new manga news. And on Friday at 11 o'clock, On Anime Lockdown, I'm going to be talking about horror in anime manga. Check it out. Can't wait to talk about it. Hope you guys had fun. As usual, I am your host, Zan. I'm Gonsville. I'll catch you guys next time, and keep reading manga. See you later.